Hello and welcome to Math World. Today we're going to talk about solving square roots and cube roots. Uh, in our last video, we looked at what a square root is and how to solve it, whether it was a perfect square or a non-perfect square. Today we're going to focus on solving, which means when we have an equal sign. So for example, if s squared equals 49, what are the steps we should use to solve this problem for s? What is the missing number, missing variable for s? Well, the same way we solve any other problem, we're going to want to use inverse operation. So we look at the operation occurring to our variable s. In this case, we see a square symbol. And the opposite of the square symbol is a square root. So what we're going to do here is we're actually going to square root both sides of the problem, just like when we solve any equation. So when we square root the s squared that we had, well, it essentially gets rid of the square and the square root. They kind of uh, cancel each other out. On the right side of the problem, we will be square rooting the 49. And that's really the part of it we care about, square root 49. Because when you square root 49, you get an answer of 7. On the left-hand side, well, the square and square root cancel each other out, leaving only an s. So now we're left with the answer s equals 7. And you may be thinking to yourself, hey, I'm done. It's 7 because, you know, 7 times 7 does equal 49. But in this video, we'll think about, well, is s the only possible answer? And I ask you to think about the negative numbers you learned in seventh grade, could s also be negative seven? What do you think about that? Well, if seven times seven equals 49, that's why it's a possible solution. It's negative seven times negative seven is also positive 49. Because of our integer rules, two negatives multiply and make a positive, meaning that negative 7 is also a solution. So we end up with two answers when solving for a square root. We get a positive version of the answer and a negative version of the answer. So S could be both positive and negative 7. Often we see this written as S equals plus or negative seven, positive, negative seven. Or you could write them out separately. In another problem, let's try one like S cubed equals 125. Let's try solving this problem. Well, in this problem, we don't have a square above our variable s. Instead, we have a cube. That little three, remember, is raised to the third power, or cube. And the opposite operation of a cube would be cube root. So we'll do a cube root. Remember, it looks just like the square root symbol, but it has a little three above it on the ledge, showing it's a cube root. So we're going to cube root both sides of the problem. Cube root the left and cube root the 125. We're cube rooting both sides of the problem to keep it equal. On the left-hand side of the problem, just like in the previous problem, the cube root and cube cancel each other out, leaving us with just the letter s, the variable s, while on the right-hand side of the problem, we can do the operation. Oop, I forgot my little three here. We want to make sure we're using the same operation on both sides. That's a great thing to remember. So if I'm cube rooting one side, I want to cube root the other side as well. So let's cube root 125. And when you type that in the calculator or using your anchor chart, you will get the answer of 5. And remember that is because 5 times 5 times 5 is 125. All right, now let's think about should I put a negative sign on it like I did in my square answer? Well, would negative 5 times negative 5 times negative 5 equal positive 125 still? 
if you remember your integer rules, an odd amount of negatives will create a negative answer. And so negative five will not work for this problem because we want to get our answer to be positive 125. So in this case, we can actually just leave our final answer as only positive five. That's the only number when multiplied by itself three times will give you 125. So for solving square roots and cube roots, the only difference is sometimes we have a plus or minus that positive negative sign in front. You could get two answers for squares, but for cubes, still just one answer. Well, that's it for solving square roots and cube roots, and I'll see you in class.